Welcome back to IAS Tech. In this video, you are going to learn that how to build this draggable window in HTML, JavaScript, and Tailwind CSS. So you can see that you can drag this window, you can click on the maximize, and you can minimize the window, and you can still drag and drop, and you can again open the window and close it and open it. So if you want to learn how to build this by yourself, please continue watching this video. So first of all, I will create the initial HTML file. And then I will set up the HTML5 starter code. And in this, I will install the Tailwind. And to get the Tailwind, you just go to this documentation and copy paste this script. You don't have to do anything else. And uh, in order to make the extension suggestions working in your code, for uh, you just have to add another file, an empty file that would be tailwind.config.js. So the benefit of this file would be that you will be able to see the suggestions from the extension like this. So these suggestions are coming <clears throat> because of this file, because we have installed an extension here, Tailwind CSS. So that's it about it. Now let's begin. I'm going to run this file in the browser. So first of all, I need to, I want to set a background color. So for that, let's try glass bg purple okay in this i will create a button that we will use to open the dialog or window so now i want to design this button uh, for that first of all i would add some margin around it and next i will add a border and color border should be All right, now I need some padding. I need more padding horizontally, but I need less padding vertically. For that, I will use PY-3 and PX should be five. Okay, that's fine. And let's add some hover effect on it. So on hover, the background color should be changed. So let's try background color as white and the text color should become purple. And the shade should be 700. Okay. Uh, we should change the text color on hover. So I have to add the hover again. All right, so this is nice last thing in this button i would like to add the transition effect on the colors so if you hover on it you will notice the smooth transition behavior uh, when you change the color so after that i will design the dialog or window that we want to display on it so for that i will for first of all create a div and uh, <clears throat> this is a wrapper so i will give it a uh, an id wrapper and inside of wrapper we have two further sections one is header and second one would be the content
here I will add some sample text. So any dummy text. So okay. Now <clears throat> I am going to design it. So first of all, I need to add background white color on the wrapper. For that, add a class BG white. And <clears throat> now I need some padding around it. I will add padding on the header and content separately because I want I want a divider below the header. For that, add P six and <clears throat> P six. Okay. After that, I need. I need to set a specific width to it. So by default, it should have a limited width. So for that, I'm going to set width, let's say 96, or maybe a bit higher than 96. So let's see if we have that available. Uh, instead of that, I would try this approach. In this, I would say I need a width of uh 40% let me see if that works yeah this is working but 40% is too much so i would reduce it down to 30% that is still not good so let me see if 20% is sufficient all right that is fine i guess after that i need to <clears throat> bring this dialogue in the middle and also i want to align the text in the middle uh, in the content area for that type text center and i need to add some styles to the heading so four excel and i need some margin bottom I also need some margin bottom uh, below the padding as well. That is not sufficient. I will increase it a bit further. This is way too much. So let's try to try some smaller. Is still too much so. okay this is fine so after that i want to add some border below the header for that i will add a class border b border b Also, I want to set the color of the border for that type border space a dash and scroll down to find the shade that you want to add. This is too dark. I want to lighten the shade for that. Let's try a lighter. This is too light. So let's try 200. This is also too much light. Uh, this is sufficient. Now I want to increase the font size of the header for that i would type text to excel uh, um, maybe i need to try excel anyways now i want to change the color of the header to the purple for that text purple 700 all right uh, next i need to add some border radius around my wrapper for that I will add rounded to Excel. Okay. Now I want to align this wrapper in the center of the layout. So for that I would set I would set absolute and left should be auto and right should also be auto and margin 
should also be auto. Uh, something is wrong. I guess I should have added left zero and right zero as well. All right, now it is in the middle horizontally. If you want to set it in the middle vertically as well, for that you would have to type top zero and bottom zero. Oops, something went wrong. So this is behaving like this because we did not set any specific height. So to fix that, I would have to add the height. So let's try it. H ninety yeah. All right, uh, ninety six is too much, so I would try some uh, hard coded that would be maybe uh, four hundred pixels. Let's try that. 400 is still too much so uh let's see 300 is too less i would try 350 pixels 350 is too much so let's try 320 pixels all right so <clears throat> after that i want to add some icons on the right side of the header so that we could maximize it, minimize it, and close it. So in the header section, I would create another div that would uh, we will call it actions. And uh, inside the actions, I want to add three icons. So go to the font awesome. So we will try to use the icon from the font awesome. Let's see. So for example, I want to use window icon or uh, maximize yeah this one so i have to copy this one but uh, if you want to use this syntax you have to install the font awesome so let me see if there is a cdn available for font awesome So I am going to try this one. Let's see if that works. So just paste this uh, code here. And now I will try to use the icon code from here. And let's see if that works. All right, you can see that now we are able to use the icons. And other than that, I want to add another icon above the draggable window to make it a little bit more interesting. For example, I want to use a movable icon. So I would paste this icon above the draggable window heading and then I would increase the font size. This is looking strange.
let's try this one. So for some reason that icon is not working correctly. Okay, I guess this would uh, be fine. So I would now increase the font size of this icon. So maybe more than that, 4XL. And I want to set the color of this icon to the purple. Right <clears throat> now, I want to add some circle around this icon. So in order to make it circle, you just have to add the rounded full and you have to add a fixed width. And now I want to add a border around it. The width and height should be higher than 50. So for that, let's try 100 pixel. And now I want to align the icon. For that, I would add flex item center justify center. Okay. And Hundred is too much, I guess. So I would decrease it from hundred to seventy. And now I want to bring this circle in the middle. For that, uh, I can try M auto And now I want to add margin bottom. MB4 and the height should be more than what we have right now because now it is taking more space. So maybe here instead of adding a fixed height, I would try minimum height like this. Mm. let's just increase it to 420 and about the header we need to display them uh, in the same row instead of stacked like this so for that i would add a relax here and then i want to justify space between justify between 
all right and let's increase the width a little bit from 20 to 30 percent maybe uh, or maybe 26 percent okay now if user hover their mouse on the header then uh, the cursor icon should be changed and that should look like a move icon so for that i would add another class on the header that would be cursor move okay now you can see that now we have a move icon when you hover your mouse on the header and after that we will implement the move events as well after styling these actions button so after maximize icon i want to add minimize icon so let me search the minimize and close icon here so let's try this one and after minimize i want a close or cross icon yeah this one okay so you can see that we have now all of the icons that we need uh, this minus icon should be in the middle let's see what's wrong with it so if i add display flex no that's not good maybe i should have used a different icon or maybe i should add some flex around the parent let me try that Gap, ten pixels, and a line item center. No, this is not fixing it. So maybe instead of uh, minus, I should use the dash icon. So let's try that. Uh, dash icon did not work for some reason. So now I will try the hyphen icon. Hyphen is also not working. Now I will try the minus icon. Okay, this is working perfectly fine. By the way, if uh, you are unable to add icons with the with this method, you can definitely click on the SVG and from the SVG you can download the code for that. So for example, if you want to uh, get the SVG, you can just inspect on it, click on the inspect element and go here. Uh, anyways, leave that. So now I want to add flex here, gap 5, instead of 5 let's try 3, okay that's fine. Now uh, if user clicks on the maximize button then uh, by the way if uh, we should not show the move icon when user hovers uh, on the actions button so for that <coughs> i would add another class here cursor default or maybe i should have added actually instead of default i would just add pointer so whenever you user hover their mouse on any of these button they will see the pointer icon and now if user clicks on maximize button then this would uh, uh, show this window in the maximize position uh, it will consume 
100% width and height so for that I would create few functions at the bottom you can create a separate JavaScript file as well if you want to so here create a function maxi mice and I will also create a function for minimize and another function close and another function that would be open okay so in the whenever somebody clicks on the maximize button this function would be called and this function would uh, get this element and it will change its width and height so uh, let wrapper is equal to document dot query selector here i will add the selector of the wrapper and then i will select the wrapper dot last list and here I will add another class that would be W full so let's see if that works I have to call this function when user clicks on this icon so on click let's call this function and see if that works yeah this is working and uh, now we also have to now we also have to uh, increase the height as well like we did for the width all right you can see that it is working fine it is in the full width and height and if user clicks on the maximize button again it should uh, decrease its width and height back to the default so instead of calling it maximize i would call it toggle maximize because it would be doing it uh, this work in two directions so here we will check if it is already full then we will remove the full class okay so if a wrapper has if a wrapper has a class of w dash full then remove it otherwise uh, add it let's try if that works so now it is in the full screen if i click on that again it will remove the width full class from it and that's why it will again uh, will use these two classes so that is working fine after that if user clicks on the minimize button then uh, it should look like it is minimized so for that <clears throat> I have to call this minimize function on this element and inside of the minimize I have to select the wrapper and now inside the wrapper element I would select another element that would be content this content element I would uh, change the height of this element to zero. So set height of zero to it. I would just add uh, h uh, class list dot add and h zero. 
let's see if that works uh it is not working let me see what's wrong content query selector let's look at the inspect element to see if there are any errors i don't see any errors yet so let's see if uh, h0 class is added already or not so i can see that h0 is there so it has removed the height but uh, the content is still visible to hide the content i guess i have to add the dis uh, overflow hidden nope it is still not working uh, so instead of adding height zero here i would add some height to the wrapper class list add and i will add the height of the header so that only header would stay visible everything else would be hidden so in order to get the height of the header i have to select the header from the wrapper and now i want to get the height of the header for that let's try alert header dot computed uh, get computed there should be a function that would give us the uh, high computed height of this header so for that uh, actually let me console it then we will see what are the functions that we have there so if you click on the minimize this is the header element i will uh, store it in the global variable so that i could do experiment on that so in the tmp1 we have this Let me make a quick search from Google. So, in order to use the get computer style, we have to use the window element. So, for example, here window.get computed style, then you have to pass the element which you want to calculate. So, here window dot computed style and pass the header and let header styles and in this i will i want to see the width or height okay now i will set this height to the wrapper so in the wrapper i will add the class h and here i will add the width of header So actually we need the height so i will name it to the header height and now here i will add h dash so 
now let's try i also have to add the overflow hidden so first of all let's see if it has added the height or not yet yeah you can see that it has added the 77 pixel so i have to remove the pixel and also i want to add overflow hidden okay looking great now uh, if user clicks on the minimize again then it should uh, change it back to the normal position or maybe we we should just hide the minimize button and you user will click on another button or maybe let's keep it as it is so instead of minimize i will add toggle minimize and now we will check if it has this height already then we will remove this style if wrapper dot class list includes uh, contains So if this class does not exist already, then we will add it. Otherwise, we will remove these classes. Okay, let's try. So it is not removing. Let me see what's wrong. It does not go in the second section so yeah this was the mistake i should have used the uh, template literals okay now it is working perfectly fine so now we have maximize button and uh, we have minimize button at the end we have to implement the close button so in order to implement the close button i would again get the wrapper and i would add a class display none uh, let me double check if there is a display none class or uh, hidden yeah we should use the hidden class And if you want to open the dialog, then we should <coughs> remove the hidden class. And by default, there should be a hidden class on the dialog. So I want to call the open window. When user clicks on the open window, something is wrong here so the type of the button should be button and now it should work i guess uh it's still not working something is wrong maybe open as a reserved word so let me try open window yeah that was the issue i guess open was the reserved word in javascript so i renamed it from open to open window and now it is working and now i want to call the close window button uh, function by when user clicks on the close icon
it is not closing let me see uh, let me see if we are adding the hidden class or not so this is a wrapper and i don't see any hidden class here so not sure oh, maybe i should use close window as the name of the function okay now let's try so you can see that now open and close are working so we can open the window we can minimize the window we can maximize the window and we can close the window now the last thing that we want to implement is that we want to be able to drag this window anywhere I'm going to refactor this code a little bit. So for example, this code is being repeated uh, every time we use it in these functions. So you can see this is being repeated four times. So I'm going to move it uh, from this function outside and I will remove it from everywhere else. Similarly, we don't need header here. So we can now reuse uh, these variables globally. So I am removing from everywhere. All right, now I am going to test it if these work or not. So let's refresh it and see. Yeah, it is working. Minimize is also working and cross is also working. So that is perfect. now we will make this element draggable so let's go to the javascript section i am going to move all of this code in the external javascript file to, to make it cleaner so so let's copy paste all of this code and move it to that file And instead of that, I will just add the path of the file. Okay, now let's test if this is still working. Yes, it is working. So now we can continue. So in order to make it draggable, I need another variable that would be is mouse down. So we need to be able to know that if mouse is down, so that we could uh, track the movement. So for example, a <coughs> uh, user has clicked on the header and when, when user starts moving it, uh, on the move event we will now that user uh, mouse is still down so we need to drag the element if user mouse button is not down then on mouse move we do not need to make any changes to the uh, position of the element so let's see that more practically so first of all we have to register uh, an event that would be document uh, or maybe we have to add the mouse add the event on the header element so header dot add event listener and here you have to specify that you need to register mouse down event and in this i will just change the value of is mouse down is equal to true so after that i need to register another event so whenever uh, mouse is being moved we need to track that movement of mouse so that we could get the x y coordinates of the mouse and then we will use them to set uh, the values of left and top of uh, the wrapper element 
so first of all i will check if mouse is not down then we don't have to track this mouse event we don't have to run our logic uh, for this movement so i will just return and it will go down only if mouse is down <coughs> so for that now i need to uh, change the position of the wrapper element for that i will use the wrapper element dot left dot style left is equal to e dot client x plus pixels similarly we need to add top style is equal to e dot client y okay and when user leaves the mouse button we need to change the value of is mouse down back to the false so let's add that event as well document dot add event listener mouse up and here let's just change the value of mouse down is equal to false okay now let's try that <clears throat> i'm going to drag it you can see that dragging is working perfectly fine but there is one problem the problem is that when you click uh, on the header then it uh, there is a jerk it moves the element to the right and after that the drag behavior works correctly but uh, this is not a correct behavior when it pushes it away so whenever you click on that it jumps to the right bottom so we have to improve that behavior here i will have to create some more variables <coughs> initialize the position variable and here we need to preserve the uh, x offset x offset and uh, offset y and let mouse x 0 let mouse y 0 basically in the offset x we will save the difference uh, between uh, this edge and from the mouse position so so this will tell us that what is the gap or distance between the left edge of the div and the current position of the mouse we don't need to save this one we can remove it but we need to preserve this value okay now on mouse move we have to on mouse down we will uh, take the value of actually we already have the wrapper element that we can use i just need to get the offset left and i want to subtract the client x from the event so this is actually giving me the x coordinate uh, for the uh, your mouse cursor on the browser so i want to save this value in the offset x similarly we need to save the value for the difference of y coordinate so now we have used the offset top okay so further uh, in the mouse move event we should use the e dot prevent default so if there is any kind of default behavior that uh, stops us to do something we want to prevent that so i just call that uh, and other than that <coughs> here instead of using this value i have to uh, add the offset a difference value that we created earlier so here we have to add the e dot client y with the offset y and the 
final value would have the pixel unit with it and it would be added to the left and top so let's try if that improves that issue <coughs> so you can see that it is still not working correctly there is still a jump when you uh, drag it so let's fix that so remember that we have added some uh, tailwind css classes left zero right zero top zero bottom zero so actually these classes are, are conflict conf so basically these classes are conflicting with our code because left zero uh, means left colon zero so as you can see in the hover as well the, it adds this style property and this one add, uh, add this one so it is actually conflicting with our properties so in so in order to fix that we have to remove those classes first before adding these styles so for that i will just uh, type wrapper dot class list dot remove and left zero and we need to remove all of the such classes so let's copy paste it for four times top right bottom because you can see we have all of these four classes here so we have to remove all of these classes first okay now if i try then you will notice that it is working perfectly fine so you can see nothing is wrong now it is very smooth and very nice so after making it draggable i found that there are some other issues that uh, we have faced uh, those issues are that for example i have dragged it here and for example if you don't do anything you just click on maximize and this you can see that uh, it is looking like this it did not preserve the position that it had earlier so let's see what's wrong with that So I am observing the wrapper classes. So right now we have left, right, zero, top zero, bottom zero. So if you click on that, if you maximize that, we have W full and H full. If you click on that again, then so actually uh, when you click on that, uh, Sometime mouse move event is triggered. Uh, so that removes the top left right uh, bottom zero classes. So we have to add these classes or uh, remove these classes. So let's see. When you uh, toggle maximize, then uh, minimize, uh, when, when you toggle maximize, then we should try to add these classes to see how it behaves so let's try i'm going to add these classes okay let's see so if you click on that maximize no it did not work So actually, I think this is how we should uh, improve it, that we are tracking the mouse down event, right? Here, in order to uh, drag it. So, but we should not uh, trigger the mouse down event when user clicks on the on any of these buttons. So to so to make that possible uh, in the draggable window we need to find the element where we have these actions buttons and add the click event on clicked and we should use event dot prevent default uh, or i guess i should use the stop immediate propagation so let's see if that does the job uh, no it did not work so let's try other as well 
and also let's try to use event dot uh, prevent default so let's see uh, it is still working let me see what's wrong actually we have to hijack the mouse down event not the click event so on mouse down now it should work so you can see that if you uh, drag the drag from here then it will not work so let's try maximize and so you can see that this time it is working fine and if you minimize it and click on that again it is working fine so far so now we will test it again after dragging the window to see how that behaves now i have dragged the window now i will click on maximize this time it did not work properly so let's see how to fix that so whenever user clicks on the uh, maximize then we should add these classes let me see what's going on here Yeah, we should remove the uh, these custom left rights. So, so we should uh, remove these custom uh, left and top uh, styles, so that the tailwind classes could work properly. So I would here say that instead of this value, I would like to add. Uh, let me see what are the possibilities so here we can use unset i guess that should do the job so i will i will set it on the top and let's see if that works so i have dragged it now i clicked on maximize it still did not work because it did not remove the left and top not only that it also did not add these classes actually i have added this in the minimize that was that's why it was not working so let's try it in the to toggle maximize and let's try first try without these two lines of code so i have dragged it i have maximized it did not work so i will add this one and now let's try okay now it is working fine and if you click on it again then it uh, looks like this but this is not not how it should work so uh, so this part should work for when you want a full screen but once you don't want a full screen then uh, So let's see why it is sticking to the bottom right. Actually, a left unset and top unset should not uh, be added. Maybe we should try to remove these classes. I don't know how. Let me try. Or maybe I will just add empty. So let's see if that does the job. 
आई होप दैट दिस वीडियो इज यूज फॉर यू प्लीज डोंट फॉर गेट टू सब्सक्राइब टू माई यूट्यूब चैनल एंड क्लिक ऑन बेल आइकन इफ यू वॉन्ट टू गेट नोटिफाइड फॉर ऑल ऑफ माई अपकमिंग वीडियोज एंड ऑल्सो प्लीज लाइक एंड शेयर दिस वीडियो थैंक्स फॉर वॉचिंग सी यू नेक्स्ट टाइम so that is perfect